So we're into year three of my FM24 beta save, and things are going well in our first season back in the Premier League with QPR. In this winter transfer window, I'm looking for a right-sided wing-back, and I'll be using the small amount of Python code that I've developed to help me compare and rank players as I look at shortlisting players and making a sensible transfer. As always, in the description, you'll find links to download the code and a setup guide on how to use it. So why am I looking at upgrading this position? Well, I think the best way to demonstrate that will be to look at the squad using the scoring system I like to use, which takes data out of the game, which is what I'm doing now, just taking the data in this squad view out of the game, and then brings it into Python, where it recalculates a few scores. Now at fullback, on left wing back, we have Udogi, who we've got from Spurs on a, a loan to buy deal. And we're going to go ahead and, and buy Udogi. We've got a 9 million clause, which is a fabulous deal. Udogi has been one of the best players in our team. And we'll go ahead and do that. Mankio we've got here at 13.6. And then Pastor we've got here at 13.1. And to benchmark those numbers, 13.6 for Mankio and 13.1 for Pastor, what I've done is I have compared our squad against the squad of Aston Villa. Now in the save, Aston Villa are on the brink of European football or they just qualify each season. I think we should still benchmark against teams that are on the brink of Europe. And I would expect for the next few seasons trying to build towards that level. So this is the weakest starter in each position. 13.6 here is Mankio. Pastor, who was down at sort of 13, 13.1, is a backup. And that's the position we find ourselves in. If you look at the natural fitness for Mankio at 12 and an age 31 player in a role where we know that work rate is important, I think it's a concern that he will begin to decline. If he does begin to decline, then we might be in a world where both Mankio and Pastor are below Premier League level. So as we come into next season, what I would hope is that Mankio would be the backup, that we would have signed a new player who could be the starter and that Pastor, who has had a good season making cameos off the bench, might perhaps at the moment be in a good position to sell on. So when we look at the squad as a whole, what we're going to look to do in this video is upgrade, if we can, at right wing back. Most of the other positions, I think we're clearly behind a club like Aston Villa, but most of it I think we'll deal, try to deal with in the next summer transfer window. So here we are on the player search screen, and what we're going to do is remove the left wing backs and the work permit. This filter is, uh, you can download this in, from the description. Uh, and then you can see there's 56 players found here as right wing backs. I think what we want to do, seeing as we're now talking about uh, players towards the upper reaches of the Premier League, I think we're just going to increase these a little bit. So I think we'll accept uh, acceleration will increase it a bit. Uh, let's do stamina up a bit and strength, I think, strength eight um, in the in the Premier League. I think that's I think that's fine. Obviously, I'd like these other things to be higher, but what we'll do is we'll let the calculation deal with that. So now we're down to 21, which seems like a sensible number. And again, we'll just make sure that we're in the all attributes view, which we are, and then pull the data out and ask our Python code to read it and see what it makes of these various write backs. All right, so, okay, so the first one, they start at 14.2 and they reduce, and, and I in the filter, we've got it as slightly interested. So these should be players that want to come and play for QPR. 14.2 and reducing. So to start off, we're not going to pay 50 million. We don't have those kind of resources. We're not going to pay 25 million. So those two players won't make our shortlist. What we'll do now is go through and shortlist players. I think here, uh, why can't 13.9, sensible value, 25. Good personality, that seems like a, the first player to go onto our shortlist. So we'll just uh, look at him on in-game. And yep, I mean, that looks like a promising player. The, the, the scoring system will like that 19 work rate. And I, I suspect that's why we've got such a such a high number there coming out of the scoring system. So that's uh, why against. Then we've got Selic from Juventus. He's, uh, that's a low value there for a player so he hasn't uh, been able to get into the team. That looks like an interesting interesting player, one for the shortlist. Uh, here, another player, Bitler. 
perhaps a bit more expensive, perhaps a bit less interesting, but I think probably just about makes the list. Then Williams, English, 25, uh, can play both sides, good personality. Okay, that's um, an interesting add as well. Uh, probably not that kind of valuation, those kind of wages. I still think we're in a world where we're probably paying 40, 50,000 a year. We're not quite in a position where we level up above that yet. Here we've got a cheaper alternative. So let's add this player. I think we can, we, we don't need to go too cheap at this stage, uh, but I think we're, uh, I think we're in a decent place um, financially, but we're not, we're not in a position to make big money signings at this stage. And maybe if we go down, perhaps this might be the last player that we, we'd add to the list uh, from these. And now look, one thing that I think we should do with a wing back, which is perhaps different to some other positions, uh, is consider players that aren't necessarily wing backs by position uh, and run a filter that also just considers that. So what I mean specifically is here, we've asked it to give us players that fit these scores but as accomplished as, as right back, either accomplished or natural. But there are quite a lot of midfielders in the game that can become wing backs, and there are a lot of wing backs in the game that can become midfielders. And seeing as we're halfway through the season, we're safe in the Premier League, fourth place, uh, and you know, therefore we can perhaps risk having a player who is playing an unfamiliar position. We might just consider whether there are any players that don't identify readily as right backs, but could be good right backs. So let's just have a look to see if we run the filter again, but we just remove that positional um, point and just say, who are players that could be good right wing backs? Let's see if any of them are different to the filter we had before. So we start off with the two expensive guys. They're the same. And here we go. Here's an example of what I mean. This player here, this is Benny McKendy, 23, Casa Pia, which I think is a club in Portugal. Uh, let's have a look at that. There we go. The Portuguese Premier League. Uh, good average rating in the Portuguese Premier League. And some stats that on the face of it look pretty good for a wingback, even though he is not a wingback. Before we look at the shortlist we just created, a quick reminder on the attributes that the scoring system is looking for for a right-sided wingback. These weightings, which if you look in the other videos of my channel, I've been through these weightings, but they, they effectively try to give us a sense of which are the more important attributes. And that would might be pace, acceleration, stamina, and work rate. But then there's a whole other bunch of attributes that matter. And so a player that's quite well-rounded is always a good option at wing back, which is why they're so hard to find. So if we come to our short list here and we sort by acceleration, this view, which is again, is available in the description, simply attempt to order the attributes in roughly the same way as we just saw on the other page. And then we can look across from left to right from the more important attributes towards the less important attributes. And I don't see when I look at this list, uh, which has got the seven players we've already identified on it, any players that obviously should come off the list. It looks like a pretty solid group. And I think the scoring system has uh, caused us to look at a bunch of pretty solid options. The scouts results are in. They must have worked over Christmas because I think the, uh, we sent them off to look at the players on Boxing Day and here they are on the 29th. And if you look at the stars here, they are basically saying the players are all pretty similar to each other, uh, which is not a massive surprise. I think if you just look at the attributes, you can kind of see that for yourself. Um, there's not an absolute standout here, uh, at least to my eyes, there's not an absolute standout here. Just a reminder of what the scoring system uh, thought for the players. This is just the players that are on the short list. If we just sort it here by fullback, its view is that the, the midfielder McKendie was an interesting looking right back and that of the right back, there wasn't much in it, but maybe Wygant and Selick would stand out versus the others. So come back to this, the scouts don't entirely agree. They do agree that there's good potential for, for McKendie. And I, I can see a, a world in which you could get interested in signing McKendie here and putting him in as the right-sided wing-back. I mean, I think it, it looks pretty um, promising to me um, that that's something that you could do. I don't think right now in this save it's the right thing to do because I think that's a reasonably high fee for 
QPR to pay. And I don't think the personality is not um, great. Although I think the um, this stuff, the hidden ratings look pretty good actually. So you can see how you could persuade yourself to want to do it. But I don't, I don't think that's a transfer I'm looking to do right now. I think the player needs about a little bit better to go through the whole position switch thing. It's always good to look for players like this, but I don't think right here, right now, it's the one to go. So I think, I think we take him off. And then I think we are left with players that are pretty similar. Uh, if you look at, at Weigand and then compare him to Selig as the two that the system leads think are the best options, uh, you can see that uh, from here, it's the, the physical is the one where, where Weigand stands out. And you can see why that is, because if you look at the... Uh, it's really the work rate, which is which is 19. So you, I do wonder really if you've got a bunch of players where they're all quite similar to each other, where if you can find one characteristic that stands out that is clearly superior and is 19, I guess 19, 20 attributes, you might call that sort of getting towards world class. Everything else is about the same. So that kind of calls me to feel like Wigan is the, the head of the field for this. Um, if you look at Herrera and just look at the sort of key attributes here. He's just not quite as good and he costs the same and he's a bit more expensive. And so I don't think Herrera is in, in the discussion. I think it's probably the same with this guy Costinha. If we if we compare Costinha to Wigand, I think it's, it's all pretty close. I don't think there's there's massive amounts of difference here. Again, I think it's a pretty similar story. I think Costinha probably is just about a little bit less interesting. Um, this guy's got a lower star rating. But I mean, there's only so much of that. It says good, good League One, uh, which is uh, interesting. Um, I, I think he'd be pretty good in, in League One. This looks like a, a decent player to me and one that we should probably consider, although um, a bit older, more expensive. I think probably one that falls by the wayside. And then, and then Williams. And of course, Williams has the great benefit of being English, which is so important uh, if you're focused on ESC slots. Now, I actually don't think we, uh, and sorry, the ESC slots is this work permit point where if you've got about four of your players in your starting lineup are English, then you will get more slots for players that don't need a work permit. I happen to think that if you're where we are now in the middle of the Premier League, not at the very top and not in the championship, I think the ESC slots is a bit less exciting because we're not real. We're now in a world where most of the players we want to sign can get work permits. But again, Williams looks quite promising. That's not quite as good a polygon as as Wigan, Just as like it's not as good a scoring system. Result 13.5. But I think I think Williams is one that we've looked to look at very closely for only 1.9 million because that's a player that really could be quite promising for us. Uh, let's have a, a, a closer look here i think I and mean, i think really it just boils down to the this 19 work rate keeps attracting my attention when i look at this it's very close for me between all of these three players and i think the plan from here what i'll do is i'll i'll think i'll make an attempt to sign wygant and if that doesn't work on sensible economics then we'll come back and try between Selig and Williams okay so let's see how we get on with this seven to nine those are that's okay let's try seven let's see how we get on now the other thing is that if we're going to do this we should probably see whether there's an offer or an opportunity to sell Pastor so let's do that yep there's interest okay good bring whatever offers there are okay here we go let's see if we can get a sensible contract he wants a squad player which i guess told you that this guy is not going to be a mega star but he might be a decent player for us let's, let's just bring this down a bit see if we can about 40 feels about right wants more okay bids for pastor now this is our current reserve right back nine and three quarter million uh perfect this is what I, I think we hoped for uh it will fund the other transfer 
The question is, do we try to negotiate these upwards? I actually think, no, we don't, because I don't want to, for a couple of million uh, or whatever we would get negotiating these against each other, I don't think there's enough to be gained from that. I think we just accept this, do these two transfers at the same time and move on. Now, something about the good bid that came in for Pastor's got me thinking twice about whether I should go for Wigand here because one of the things that I have in mind when I'm playing football managers, yes, we're not trying to get the best players we can, but we're also trying to get a good squad of contracts. And I just wonder if Brandon Williams, who has got really interesting hidden ratings, is a decent right-sided wing back and is English, has got a good age. I just wonder if we can do a really good value transfer for Williams with a low fee and a, a great contract, because if we can, maybe that's the way to go. So what I think I'll do here is, is I'll make an offer on Williams, who is on the transfer list. Okay, here's Williams. Uh, he's got more interest in, in joining uh, clubs that would, I would suspect, be willing to pay him an awful lot more than us. But let's see. Will he accept a really strong contract where he'll be a sub, he'll be a backup at a sensible valuation? It's looking promising so far. Let's see if we can... about 25 no, it might we might budge perhaps let's try a bit right no no movement but 30. here's pastor uh we can tell him for nine and three quarters i'm going to hit delay just to make sure the other transfer goes through on the same day he's got his work permit i think while we wait on williams i'll just delay here as well is uh has accepted the transfer terms and now we need to make our decision because we've got our two right backs here, Wigand and Williams, and we've got the sale of Pastor. And we need to figure out which one we're going to go. And I think on balance, having thought about it, and I've changed my mind while I've been thinking about it, I'm going to go with Williams and bring Williams into the squad. And the logic is this. Williams, I think, is a backup, really. And Wigand is a starter. But I think Williams is better at being a backup than Wigand is at being as a starter. So if I think forward two years for this squad, two seasons from now, I can see if we had Wigant in the squad we, as the starter, we'd probably be looking to bring somebody else in as, as, as we progress. And I'm not sure Wigant coming down to be the backup is as attractive as William staying in the squad for three or four years as an English player and as a player in his prime is 25 coming through. So I think that isn't what I was expecting when I went looking for a, a starter to come into the squad and it's a bit of a surprise but I think what we're going to do we're going to accept Williams we are going to tell Pastor and we're going to cancel the transfer Williams now is in the squad. I think he'll be the backup. I don't think he'll start, but I think as Mankio declines, I think Williams will get minutes and then we'll see where we are at the end of the season. The other position group that I think I'm going to look at in this transfer window is centre-back. I'm not going to do that now. Uh, I think I'll do it a bit later in the transfer window. And so I'll probably save that for the next video. If you want to watch that, do subscribe to this channel and that video will come in due course. Uh, the other video, if you've enjoyed this one, that I would recommend to you is a previous video in this series where I, I'd looked for a striker and we've brought in some of the strikers here. If you haven't seen that, perhaps worth a look. Um, thanks uh, very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.